All righty, we're back uh, visiting with uh, Arizona's next senator, Daniel McCarthy. Now, yeah, who's, who's Daniel, place? let me get your uh, your your thought on this. We're, we're seeing uh, Portland. We had an issue in uh, D.C. as the crap starting up in uh, uh, Denver, Colorado, with these anarchists and uh, rioters, protesters, whatever you will. Uh, what's your plan as a senator to uh, work with the uh, uh, Trump administration to stop this crap? Do we bring in the uh, the National Guard? So you're dealing with insurrection. This is funded by individuals that are not being held accountable. And for some reason, this is, this is something that's concerning to me. And part of the reason that I feel like I'm probably in this race there's no senator out of 100 senators that are opening investigations. Opening nobody, hearings. nobody, not a soul. No and, one, and I got to tell you, yeah. and pardon the interruption, I am so pissed off at the Republican side. They're sitting there on their thumbs letting this go on, go on, go on. What What are they doing? I I can tell you right now, and this is what unfortunately is the, the sad news to share with your audience, is that Republicans and Democrats are like, it's not a swamp in Washington, D.C. It's a hot tub. You know, I've I've been observing this for a long time as a, as a donor. You know, and, and and I've I've watched the games that they've been playing for a long time. The boiling the boiling point for me was this particular race, and I can go into detail on that if we need to. But what I would do is is immediately open investigations. I mean, I would use that Senate seat to sign those sign those beautiful letterhead from a senator saying, "Hey, guess what? It's time to pull these people up to." Washington, D.C., who's funding these insurrections? How are these people getting money? I can tell you, we can follow the money and we can find out who's, who's causing these CIA-type uh, guerrilla warfare tactics on our land. Exactly. This, this, is, this is barbaric, what we're living through. And in terms of actually deploying troops on our ground, it, it, the best thing we can do, in my estimation, is encourage citizens to start working together and banding together the way that our Second Amendment called for. Uh, the one thing that people always talk about the Second Amendment is our gun rights, They, but uh, they fail to acknowledge the fact that a well-regulated militia uh, being necessary for the free state, you know, I, I think I think it's important to let the get the federal government out of the way and, and say, hey, it's time to get communities back together, get people back together, network together, and, and say and push this stuff out of your communities. When this stuff comes into your communities, get it out of here. And that's what's going to happen in Arizona. I promise you that. One way or the other, uh, this is my home. I've been here for 17 years. I'm here by choice. I've, I fell in love with Arizona when I was, when I was a kid, and, and I've been here since I've been an adult. Uh, so this state, um, this is where my, my children are raised, and, and we won't settle for those type of insurrections here on our ground. Hey, well, so I have questions. Go ahead. Who, 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 who's running against you, or who are you running against? I'm in the Republican primary on Tuesday is the election day against Martha. Martha McSally and I are in this race. Uh, we're the only two candidates in the Republican primary. Uh, this is for John McCain's seat. A lot of people. Ah, okay. Uh, yeah. So, so here's the thing about this race. Why I got into this race? Because trust me, the last thing I wanted to do was be a politician. Okay, this is not. I didn't have a dream. As a matter of fact, I did everything in my power to stay out of it as long as I could. Uh, personally, I've been a donor. I was a high donor for the Trump campaign. I donated $25,000 to his campaign, but I also worked on his campaign yeah. as an unpaid consultant. Yeah. But w- what happened is, is that when, when Martha lost that race to Kirsten Cinema, we should have never lost that seat. That seat should have never been lost. Okay. And when we lost it, I said, what just happened here in 2018? Well, then when our tyrant governor, who also is a Republican, by the way, when our tyrant, uh, Dirty Doug, decided to appoint Martha uh, after she lost to John McCain's vacated seat, and, by the way, after John Kyle was appointed, I said, okay, this is a banana republic here. They're, they're clearly trying to lose this seat and turn us radical blue. Yeah. And I just said, okay, if no one's going to do something about it. I tried to get as many people to run as possible. I probably even reached out to Don at one point and sent him an email or something and said, well, you, you're dealing with a very complicated war. Like I said, unfortunately, <laughs> politics is a dirty game, and you've got people that they have a radical agenda for your country, and, and they, they hate America. They hate what we stand for. They hate our sovereignty. They want us to be a part of this global utopia that will never exist. And this has been the war since the dawn of time. I mean, this is yes. – we're not – it's just America is now waking up to – the um, 
we'll just call it the infiltration of both parties by these globalists, these elites. And it's time to eradicate this. Eradicate this. This is treason, by the way. It I, is. I want to make Absolutely. This clear. You know, and, and we're getting beat up by the uh, mainstream uh, media. Uh, if you say anything, uh, you know, you're beat down, called a misogynist, racist, a bigot, you know, you, you've heard it all. But where I sit in the media and in the outdoor world, uh, right in the middle of the sportsmen and the veterans uh, community, there's a silent majority here, Daniel, that you represent that's getting pissed. Yeah. And, you know, we're sitting here looking at all the crap going on in uh, Oregon and I don't know what's going on with, you know, I've always supported Trump. I still do. Uh, I supported bringing the troops in a little bit earlier than he did. But we should have learned something from uh, Israel and Pakistan. They had they had folks in the streets rioting, trying to crash the borders. What they do? They called the uh, airport and brought the water cannons in, gave everybody a bath. And you know what? They quit it. They just stopped yeah. it. So I have to yeah. ask the politicians up there, what the hell are you people not thinking about yeah, we, we need good sheriffs back in office. Uh, we're struggling in certain counties with really bad sheriffs as well, and we need some good sheriffs. Place a lot of Arizona, we have some good coverage, but we, we definitely need our sheriffs network together. Strong sheriffs. Uh, we need you need a strong federal senator. I mean, we haven't had a good federal senator in this state as long as I can remember. I, I want to bring back that Barry Goldwater style representation. Yes, sir. I think a Thank lot you. of people yeah. uh, come. They came. We all came here for that, right? I mean, we came here. A lot of us are political refugees from other states, and we're here because we anticipate Arizona is going to be the leader in conservatism, and uh, we've failed the country, and I think we've failed uh, our citizens. Well, with the demographics, with the uh, mass uh, exodus out of California, uh, Oregon, Washington, we're, we're, we're seeing a mass influx of Dems and uh, left-wing liberals here in Arizona, and uh, demographically, we're almost to the tipping point if we're not already there. And then we're seeing... Uh, an expanded state of Idaho taking portions of Northern California, Oregon, and Washington because of all the crap that's going on. That, that's, not, that's not my America. You know, I, one thing I'm really pleasantly surprised about is when I travel around the state, I've done over 70,000 miles around this state. I, I started this race in September, and I just did it the old-fashioned way. I literally just went to every meeting, every, talked to everybody. I've talked to tens of thousands of people personally. And the thing I tell you is, is that these individuals that are coming from California, I know a lot of people are concerned. They're here, though, because they escaped. I'm telling you, a lot of them are here because I'd say the majority, the comfortable majority of them are here because they want to have conservatism. Uh, just yesterday, I was at a huge meeting. I mean, we had 200 people show up to this, this gathering, and I, a couple came up to me. They escaped California, and they said, Daniel, we're here because you can't even say what you're saying in California. Exactly. You can't even talk the way you're talking. So, well, I'm COVID-19. Tell you what you're let, let me tell you what you're dealing with. This is a political war that you're dealing with. You're dealing yep. with the Marxist takeover of our country. I know this is a lot of Americans are just waking up to how severe this is, but let me, let me make this very clear for everybody. You're dealing with a, a government that's being weaponized against the citizens right now with uh, bureaucrats that are committed to communism and Marxism. It's their religion. It has nothing to do with uh, emotion. It has nothing to do with uh, it's taking God out of our country. It is the most sinister attack and the most complicated war we have ever been in as a country. And it's part of the reason I got in this race in September, but the reason I saw the writing on the wall was because you have to understand in Arizona, I, I grew up in a very polit high political IQ home. And my mom and dad used to always tell me something. They said, Daniel, if they go after guns in Arizona, that's when you know the writing's on the wall. And sure enough, yep. uh, re Republicans and Democrats alike started coming after firearms here in Arizona. Well, we're, gl we're glad you're in the race. Uh, well, I hope to have uh, Tanya on uh, next week. We're going to spend some time with you talking about uh, the important stuff. We need you in, uh, in the Senate uh, taking care of business. Uh, we've got a lot of things going on besides uh, – trying to take our Second Amendment rights away. We've got, uh, you know, I, I did, uh, f for you folks listening, I, I sat down with Daniel one-on-one -on -one, uh, for about an hour. Uh, great guy, uh, hunting, fishing background. He gets it. He gets it on the Second Amendment rights. But we also talked about some of the other stuff that's going on 
Everything that we do outside, Daniel, as, as we talked about, it's got two politicians, one on the left side, one on the right side. We're talking about land access. There's closures on the left, then we have to fight them on the right to get them open. Uh, we've got border issues. The Supreme Court just ruled uh, against the Sierra Club, the ACLU, to go ahead and keep building the wall. I mean, there's just such crap going on. And uh, I had the opportunity to interview uh, Martha McSally uh, last Tuesday evening, and that didn't bode well. We've got some border issues, uh, even though the Supreme Court uh, has called uh, against the uh, Sierra Club that $2 billion is uh, going to be released. But we've got a 75-mile contiguous border uh, on the o- Odom uh, Indian Reservation and, and she goes, well, you know, they're a sovereign nation. I'm going, yeah, 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 okay. They're a sovereign nation because the Bureau of Indian Affairs is paying and paying and paying them. When do we when do we turn the uh, the money switch off and uh, build a wall? Build a wall around their around the sovereign nation. Exactly. Uh, no more. It, it, look, we don't have time anymore. We've been invaded as a country, and I, I love every, I love every culture that comes into the United States. I, I have I have no qualms with with this country being exactly what it was designed to be, which is that great American melting pot, and it's a wonderful thing. But the reality of it is is that when you have 30 million people here illegally and you have individuals that are extracting capital from our country, you cannot sustain that. This is just a simple math problem. I'm a business guy, okay? So my background, I'm a CEO. For those that don't know who I am, my background, I, you know, I've ran successful companies. I've brought in tens of millions of dollars from around the world into Arizona. This is just a, a basic arithmetic. If you have 30 million individuals extracting capital out of your country and not paying taxes and, and also taking advantage of systems, the welfare systems, hospital systems, folks, that's, that's, that's a breakdown. That's, and, and again, I mean, this has nothing to do with compassion. I love my children, but if I can't take care of myself, I can't take care of my kids. And you, you've got to be in a position as a country to say no more. It's, we're going to have a border. I'm 35 years old. We haven't had a, we haven't had a border my entire life. Think about that. Oh and- yeah, absolutely. Well, it's just getting worse and worse and worse. Uh, we're seeing uh, uh, we have some uh, Democratic uh, colleagues, let's say, uh, in Tucson, Mr. Grijalva, and uh, although he and I don't see eye to eye, is that what you're going to say? Hold on, he's <laughs> contacted COVID-19, <laughs> and I wouldn't wish that on anybody, but. Uh, you know, he's, he's rallied the, uh, indigenous aborigines in uh, 26 different, uh, sovereign nations to go after closures and restrictions, uh, to Grand Canyon and, and all of this thing. And, uh, what, what is your stance on working with, uh, the president DOI, uh, to keep our, uh, public lands open? Yeah. Arizona knows what to do best with its land, and the federal government is not constitutionally supposed to be involved with these decisions in regards to Arizona land. My opinion, I'm a strict conservative constitutionalist. You have my personal endorsement. You have my vote. And uh, Mark's eyes are open, so... Yeah, dude, you got uh, the right guy on your side, because i got a big mouth, and a lot of people listen. They're stupid. There you go. So <laughs> we're, we're going to call for uh, the hunters, the anglers, Second Amendment, and constitutionalists here in Arizona to vote for uh, Daniel McCarthy. Daniel, I'll be in touch with you uh, on Monday, man. Thank you guys so much. Tuesday's the big day, guys. Please give me past this pre- I'm sure you will. And, and tell uh, Tanya we'll, uh, we'll talk about uh, Alaska fishing next week. All right. Thanks, Don. Thank you guys very much. There you go. Demand Daniel McCarthy, the next U.S. Senator for the great state of Arizona. I'm Don McDowell. That being said, you are? Mark Townsend. We'll uh, flip into a break here on uh, Fox Sports 910.